So again, uh, a lot of you guys go ahead and write down each of these. Alright. Those are the four things that we are going to be talking about first. And again, this is a very straightforward. Um, you guys may even think that I'm being uh, silly for teaching this to you. Right. Yeah, I guarantee you've done this before, and I guarantee you guys know how to uh, combine like terms, right? That's essentially all you do. So, lower and double zero, right? Huh? Yeah, it's all good. And I mean, it's, we're going to review, but it's also going to be a little bit, we'll be, I'll always give you some things that might be a little bit more, you know, we're going to build on it. So, what this is saying is if you add two functions, Alright, so that's the way you would, the way you would see that represented is f plus b of x. Literally all you're doing is taking f of x, so you're taking one function and adding the second function to it. Even if there's no like term, then you just have two things that are added together with no like term. Same thing with subtraction, it's f minus g of x. Literally all you're doing is subtracting f of x and g of x. If there's any like terms, you combine them. What is that? Disney oh, yeah. And that. Bam. Alright. Oh my god, it's going crazy. Product. You're taking your two functions, you're multiplying them together. And if you can distribute anything, cool. Quotient. Uh, you can divide. You can just talk about synthetic division or long division or small numbers last year. Long division. Long division. Yeah, synthetic division is much easier. That's what we're typically use. Um, it's much quicker. Um, so we're going to talk about how to divide functions. Typically, though, uh, all you have to do is put one function on top of the other. We're not really going to work with it too much. Especially when you get to calculus, um, you see a lot of division of uh, functions and um, you know. It's not necessarily, we're not necessarily trying to uh, like actually divide them out. Alright. So, we have each of those four things written down. to take this f of x, g of x, and h of x, and we're going to find each function and take its domain. Get it? So, this first function says f plus g of x. So the first thing I'm always going to start off by doing is just writing out what it says. So f plus g of x means all you're doing is adding you take f of x and add g of x to it. Okay? So this is equal to f of x, which is x squared plus 4. Alright? Plus g of x, which is the root of x plus 2. Cool. Are there any like terms? Okay. 
Well, the first thing you want to start off by doing is finding the domain of F. All right. The domain of, and remember, when, when do we have restrictions on our domain? And there we have two main ideas at the same time we have restrictions on our domain. They are what? So a square root function, or where you have a denominator, the denominator might equal zero. So are there any den denominators in this problem? No. Are there any square roots? Yeah. Yeah. So that means we need to we need to be very careful. If there's no denominators and there's no square roots, what's more than likely good at being able to say, okay, our um but right now we're able to say that our domain is being negative infinity to infinity. Alright? However, we square root here. So what we need to do, the best thing to do is to look at the domain of each of these things. The domain of uh, x squared plus four is what? Huh? What would the domain of x squared plus four be? Is there a square root? Is there a denominator? We're talking about just f of x. I don't hear that. Just f of x. Is there a square root? No. Is there a denominator? No. Therefore, the domain is negative infinity to infinity. All right. What is the domain of g of x? Is there a square root? Yes. Our square root cannot be negative. It can be zero, it can't be negative. So we say um, x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to zero. Subtract 2, x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? Are we all comfortable with that? The reason I say x plus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 0 is because x plus 2 is what's underneath the square root. Subtract 2, I get x is greater than or equal to negative 2. Okay? So, h of x, are there any square roots? So, actually, so my domain for that would be negative 2 to infinity. Anything larger than negative 2 or equal to negative 2. h of x, 3x minus 5. Any square roots? Any denominators? Therefore, the domain for this would be what? Can you get louder? Negative infinity to infinity. Okay? So, what you do here is which two functions did I add in this problem for the other end? I added f of x and g of x. Okay? Here's how you figure out your domain. You look at your two domains. Which one is more restricted? G of x is more restricted because this is negative infinity to infinity. This is negative 2. Okay. There's a lot of numbers. Like negative 3 is in this domain, but it's not in this domain. Negative 5 is in this domain, but not this domain. This one's more restricted. So how do you find out the domain of this? You take whichever function has a more restricted domain. Yeah. So it has a more restricted domain, this one. So the domain for this new function is equal to negative 2 to infinity. Alright, why? Because, yeah, the domain this is negative 3, so I can put negative 3 here and here. Can't put negative 3 right here, because that'd be a square root of negative 1. Questions about adding that and finding the domain. All right. So f minus h of x. You get this is just as easy. That's all we're doing. F of x minus h of x. F of x is x squared plus 4. So this is equal to x squared plus 4. Minus. Here's the trick. Here's some not really a trick. This is something you need to make sure you do. You're subtracting the whole thing of h of x. So you put 3x minus 5. Alright? 
But right now, the way I have this grid, it's a little bit, it's not right. Okay? Because I'm, I'm right now, I'm subtracting 3x and subtracting 5. But really what I'm doing is I want to subtract 3x minus 5. So I have to put parentheses around my function. You have to. Because if you don't, what's going to happen is you're going to forget that really you should be adding 5, not subtracting 5. So it's minus negative 5. You're subtracting this whole thing. So, could we leave it like this? We could, but it kind of looks silly. Because we can simplify it. We have x squared. This 4 combines with what? That negative 5. So it's 4 minus negative 5. But before we do that, let's uh, take this. We have minus 3x. And now we have 4 minus negative 5, which is going to be positive 9. Okay. We'll be subtracting those. Okay, x squared minus 3x plus 9. When we're looking at addition and subtraction, we look at the two domains and we see that they are each they are the same domain. So this domain is negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Um, again, you can also figure it out by you look at you look at f minus h. This is equal to f minus h right here. Are there any square roots? Uh, are there any de uh, denominators? No. So there's no res there's no restrictions on the domain yet. All right. So you haven't learned about anything else that has restrictions on the domain yet. Questions so far? If you're able to simplify, simplify. If you aren't able to simplify, don't worry about trying to. Okay. Uh, F times H of X. We're going to look at this one. Again, guys, you guys have seen, how, have you seen stuff like this where you have to divide like that? You've seen that, right? F times H of X. That means that you literally take F of X times H of X. Uh, we said F of X is what? X squared plus 4? So we have f, this is equal to um, x squared plus 4 times what is h of x? h of x is 5. Okay, what do you do here, guys? We do do parentheses. What, what do we call this property? This property now? Distributed property. X squared times 3x, that's going to be what? Uh, 3x. Uh, Alright. X squared times negative 5. Negative 5 squared. Negative 5 squared, negative 5x squared. Okay. Alright. Alright. 4 times 3x. And then 4 times negative 5. Do so I have anything to combine here? Nothing to combine? Can't really combine. This is a cubic term, quadratic term, linear term, constant. Nothing to combine. Is there a square root or a denominator? What would my domain be here? Here's a question. Let's see if anyone can see who remembers. What would the end behavior be for this function? Huh? It wouldn't be so saying left would be negative infinity and the right would be infinity? Good. How do you get that? Side angle function. So, so what's 
uh, oh, there's a number. There's a uh, number of points. Yeah. The leading coefficient. We look at the leading coefficient. We look at something else. The degree. We know that this is an odd degree function. Because the highest degree of this function is what? 3. We know that the leading coefficient is what in this problem? Positive 3. Not just 3. More importantly, positive. Okay. So what that tells us is that this function, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f times h of x will be equal to negative infinity. And the limit as x approaches positive infinity of f times h of x will be equal to positive infinity. How many of you guys have had that table memorized? I gave you a table, didn't I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, you get this table to have memorized. It looks like this. It has four parts. I said like you get the leading coefficient. Oh, okay, yeah, I remember. You agree with something. And then you had your end behavior. You guys remember that table? Yeah. I, 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 I strongly recommend that you guys memorize that table. Why? Because it makes it it just, it's going to help you in the long run. All right, so I strongly recommend, recommend you guys memorize that. Um, what I can maybe do, create a memory sheet. Yeah, the end behavior table. All right, I'm about to do this over here. It's much on there. Have the processing out there. All right. So h divided by f. What was h? Oh, h is this. Was this one this? So we're gonna do something. Uh, well, here we go. So h divided by f is just gonna be we have h of x, which is three x minus five, divided by x squared plus four. That's all we do. All right. Now, you have to, have to be cautious about it. Does, does everyone say how we got that division? But it's literally all you're doing is h divided by f. All right. Now, what do we? What issue do we have here? When we put it in the domain, it's the denominator, right? So what we know, in order to find our domain, all right, we have to say, okay, x squared plus four, it can't equal zero. Now before I do any math, can anyone prove to me that this will never equal zero no matter what number? Anyone explain to me why this will never equal zero? Again? What positive? Kind of both. What happens when you square a number? More importantly, it does what? What's negative seven? What's negative four squared? Anytime you square something, it's positive, right? No matter what it is, there's always to be positive plus something. If I'm adding something to a positive number, can I get a negative number? No. No. So I can look at this and see. I don't have anything to worry about. It's never going to, the denominator is never going to equal zero. Now, how do you do that mathematically? You subtract four from both sides. It says x squared minus, or x squared uh, cannot equal, oh, cannot equal negative four. No kidding. All right? It's always true. So you know that this is never going to happen. So you don't have to worry about that. All right. Questions so far? To be honest, I think you're almost about that easy. Okay. But you always got to add in a little bit more. 
you guys heard of functions? Uh, that's your, have you guys heard of function composition? I know I've taught that, but I've taught algebra too, but I don't know how it's going to change. Um, okay. This is this adding and subtracting and multiplying and dividing is straightforward like that. Function composition is pretty similar. All right? And depending on the way you want to think about it, it can be, you can do it a couple different ways. Right. So, let's, uh, you guys have something to write down now. I have a little bit here. Right here. All right. Are you still getting something down? Oh, no. Right here. Right here. Oh. Where are you at? So, here's the thing. All of these operations create new functions. Okay? And you've probably seen all these ways. You guys have seen how to add and subtract uh, common denominator, common or like terms. Alright, you guys have, I mean, you guys have seen how to multiply, so it's, it's typically it's a distributive property. And dividing, you know, to be quite honest with you, once you get to like calculus or high level of math, you're not going to do much to measure the function. You're just going to let them be the way they are and you're going to try to move your calculator work. Alright. But there is one more type of function operation that does not really include um, it does, it's not, you're not like adding and subtracting but multiplying and dividing. What you're really doing is you are sort of inserting one function into another. And this is called function composition. Function composition is the result of using one function to evaluate a second function. Function composition is going to be more like you're taking one of your functions and inserting it into your other function. So what does function composition look like? You have to be questioning it now. Look, look. Don't really pay attention. This is on the book. I put it in there because why not? Look at it. Look cool. I'm going okay. to draw a picture for you as we talk about this. This is that. That's going to explain all of this to you. Okay? Hey. Alright. So, here's what we get. First thing I want you to get down. Okay, so I'm going to tell you the story what's right down. Alright? First thing I want you to write down is these two things with this right here. Okay? What that is, is it's the notation. There's two ways that you're going to see this notation. It all depends on what book you look in. It all depends on what teacher you're working with. Both of them are correct. Both of them are read the same way. This, little, this is just like a really just a little circle. Not an O, it's not a like a little circle. Okay? So you have F little circle G, both in parentheses, then parentheses X. Or you have F, 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 parentheses G, parentheses X. And it's just a little dot. You just live like that. That little dot, you know how the plus sign is the uh, symbol for plus? If, if it's represented by something, we'll know that. No, no. It's just a symbol for composition. Yeah. Just think of it that way. Okay, so the circle might be a uh, multiplication. But do I know why I do that? It's not really. It's, it's the symbol they decided to do. Okay? So you read this. Both of those represent in our composition. You read it as F of G. Or 
That's composition. No one is going to ever say that's composition. Right? I wasn't there because the book says he was too. That book is lying. No one is ever going to say that's composition. He's making it say F of G. All right? F of G. That's three syllables versus F composition. I don't know if I did that syllable right, but comp composition. Four. So compare to six syllables. Three syllables is better. We're, I'm always going to say F of G. Never you hear the word. After today, you're never going to hear the word composition out of my mouth. Alright, so you guys want to see our picture? Yeah. <laughs> Alright? It makes coffee. 
They get green coffee down here. And so that output after it goes into the coffee maker becomes F of the event. So what does that mean? Well, it means that I took X and I put it into G. Now it came G of X. I take G of X, whatever came out of that function, and I put it into F of X, and then I get F of G of X. That makes it make a whole bunch, whole bunch more sense if you see the new game. <laughs> Your mind is blown right now. You're like, no one's ever going to explain math to me using cars. Nope. But it just happens. Alright? And the funny thing is that I think everyone's going to be the picture. <laughs> <laughs> but you're going to be going back and looking in your math notes in your college and like, why do I have a picture of call through by? All right. So, we will look at. Okay. So, let's do something here. I, I have always, whenever I've taught this, so don't write anything down yet. Whenever I've taught this, I typically go from going to, from the abstract to that like, sort of more, more find a number. All right? I want to try something different this time. Okay, I want, because I just want to see if this one helps make a little bit more sense. No, no, no. I'm just trying to think which example is the best one to show you first. So, well, let's do it this way. All right, we're gonna start here. So, this right here says f of g of s. Okay, and here I don't like this. this I personally don't. I don't like this notation. I prefer the notation. Um, I prefer the notation f of g of x. All right, and I make that g of x smaller for a reason. So we'll look at the note first. That's fine. That's the way I think of it sometimes. Too. So here's here's the way I think about this. Okay, f of x is x squared plus 1. All right, so you definitely need to have f of x and g of x written down. f of x is x squared plus 1 because it's x <coughs> squared plus 1. If this said f of x plus 3, we would replace the x with x plus 3. No, okay, if it said f of 3, I would replace x with 3 to be 3 squared plus 1. If it said f of x plus 3, I replace this with x plus 3 squared plus 1. Okay? So I think so I think whatever I say x is, I replace x with that. This is f of g of x. It's no longer f of x, right? So what am I replacing x with? I replace x with g of x. What is g of x? x minus 4. So f of g of x is really equal to f of x minus 4. Alright, well, what do we do with this? We, we didn't even see an example like this already when we talked about function transformation. This replaces x. Alright, so everywhere we see x, we're replacing it with what g of x is. g of x happens to be x minus 4 right so, put the parentheses, x minus 4 squared. And if I plus 1, I need to put on it. I'm done. All I've done is I replace the x and f of x with g of x. Okay? Now, can you expand that? You could. All right, you can say that this is equal to, I'm saying that you could say right there, but this would be equal to x squared minus 16x plus 16, no, not minus, minus 8x, plus 16 plus 1 
which would be equal to x squared minus 8x plus 17.
And if it wants you to find f of g of 2. Okay? Now, you can do it two ways. If it actually gives you, if it actually says to evaluate it at a function, it says s. Or evaluate it at a value instead of like just find a general function. That's what you do. Alright? Here's what you would do. Two ways you can do this. You can start off by finding f of g of x. Which we did. We already found f of g of x. So, right here, this is f of g of x. Alright? We want to find f of g of 2. So, what that means is we're just going to take this is f of g of x. We want to find out what this is when x is what? 2. So all you have to do, if you've already found this, is go uh, 2 squared minus 8 times 2 plus 17. Or minus 16 plus 17. So that's going to be negative, that's going to be negative uh, 12 plus 17 plus 5. What is it? Who made it? How? Oh, yeah. I'll plug into that. <laughs> you said that way beforehand, though. You have made my note card. Alright. So, let's. I want to show you the other thing. This one is what makes it, you know, the cost pot whole thing make sense. Okay? Remember I said X, put it in G, get something out. But if you get out, put it in F, and you get F and G of X. Whoops. So here we go. How can you do this without actually? How can we find f of g of 2 without actually finding f of g of x? Okay, without actually having to do this. Can we do this? Yes. It says find f of g of 2. x equals 2. Okay, there's our coffee bean, right? I'm going to put that coffee bean into the coffee grinder and there is g. g of 2. Is equal to what is g? X minus four. So all we do is plug that in. We have two minus four. Negative two. All right, we got g of two. There's our coffee. We're gonna take that coffee, bean, green, bean, ground, ground bean, and put them into the coffee maker, which is that. So now we're finding f of negative two. Well, f of negative two is. What is it? X squared plus 1. So it's going to be negative 2 squared plus 1 is equal to 4 plus 1 is equal to 5. Oh, look. How did that same answer happen? So what you can do is you can actually plug this x value into g and then take whatever number that is and just plug it into f. Or you can do the function composition. And then plug the number in. All right. All right. So it's important. We do want to, like, we really want to be good at figuring out the domains of functions. All right. That is important when it comes to analyzing functions for uh, later on this year and in calculus. Um, 
So what is, what is important to note is that it is important to him that the domains of F and G determine the domain of two functions that are composed together. All right. If the domain of F and G are, yeah, if the domain of F and G are unrestricted, then the domain of F of G is unrestricted. So if if the domain of F and G, F and G are negative infinity to infinity, then the domain of the function composition is negative infinity to infinity. If we have issues with our domain, meaning it's like the square roots or uh, denominators in in our functions, in our F and G functions, then there's going to be restrictions on the domain in F of G as we compose it. Okay, that's really all that's saying. And then I kind of said that about the you know condition and qualification all that stuff. Same type of thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's implied F of G of X. Alright? So I want you guys to try to find F of G of X for letter A. Alright? So this says F of G of X. So I'm literally plugging X squared minus sign into F of X right there. Because so 1 divided by X squared minus sign plus 1. I can simplify that. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. So it's 1 over X squared minus 8. That's my function. So, to find the domain, okay, to find the domain, first of all, do we know, do we automatically assume the domain, say, do we know anything about the domain right off that? We do. We know that the domain of F is restricted, therefore the composition is going to be restricted. So, what we can do, we see x, so we have to look at this. We know x squared minus 8 is in the denominator. We know our denominators cannot equal 0. So we say, we want to know when does x squared minus 8 equal 0. Alright, so then I'm going to make this note a little bit when does this equal 0. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. So I get x squared is equal to 8. A square root on both sides. You get x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8. When x is equal to plus or minus the square root of 8, that means my function is not defined. That these numbers are not in my domain. So x cannot equal plus or minus the square root of 8. So that's the only thing it can't equal. Everything else is going to go. It just can't equal that. So my domain would be equal to negative infinity all the way up to negative square root of 8 union uh, negative square root of 8 to 0 union oh, 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 negative square root of 8 to square root of 8 union square root of 8 to infinity. Domain is that finding the function composition. How is that? Domain 
How would you feel like, how would you feel about the domain of uh, home stages? You might need another one help. Three, four. So I'm thinking about the Asian connection help on domain two. Mm -hmm. Alright. Um. Mm -hmm. Alright. So. Yes, yeah, I said we no, I was okay. Uh, you okay? Is this where the domain? No. Over here? So all, I, so all I said here is this. So you're good with this? My denominator right now is x squared minus a. That can't, my denominator cannot be zero. Therefore, since my denominator is x squared minus 8, x squared minus 8 can't be 0. So what I want to do is I want to find out what x values make my denominator 0. So I say, okay, x squared minus 8 equals 0. When does this happen? So I add 8 to both sides. So I get x squared equals 8. So I know this is going to happen when x, I know my denominator is going to equal 0 when x squared is equal to 8. So, I don't want to know about it, I want to know about the square root. So I take the square root on both sides. That tells me that x equals, so that tells me my denominator is equal to zero when x is a positive or negative square root of eight. So I know, I know that's going to make my denominator zero. So x can't be that. And then I come over here to write my domain. Yeah, uh, you get to, yeah. The plus or minus. The plus or minus. So why? So you guys know why I put the plus or minus? Because the square root of this thing that take four. The square root of four could be two because two times two is four, and the square root of four could be negative two because negative two times negative two is plus or minus. All right. So you always gonna put plus or minus. Keep that mind for that test. Um, what? Um, well, let me check your homework real quick. I want to see if, if there's a chance that your homework might have like a couple word, a word on it though. All right. Hey, real quick, guys. Hey, um, I'm gonna give you guys some time to start on your homework. But before you do that, I want to look at number 69 on your homework, so that we can look at how to do this together. All right. So I'm gonna put this up on this uh, mark board. All right. Um, let's over. 